What's Love Universe? It's Xander, and welcome back to WWE 2K24 Universe Mode. We are here on Monday Night Raw. We are on the road to the upcoming Cyber Sunday event. It is just over a week away at this point. It will air next Sunday, September 15th, when I return from my vacation with my wife. Just as a reminder to you all that I will be out of office more or less next week. Meaning I will not be doing any watch-alongs until Friday night when SmackDown returns to the USA Network on September 13th. My wife and I are going on a honeymoon one year after we got married to go celebrate our one-year anniversary. Very excited about it. But as Cyber Sunday does loom closer and as soon as this episode has aired, I will be posting the polls on the community tab that will make it possible for you all to begin voting on stipulations, opponents, etc., etc., for the event and of course when i say out to the public i do mean monday the 2nd of september not the 1st of september on sunday for members give everyone time to actually watch the episode or click to the very end and get no context of what happened in the episode and then leave an inaccurate comment on what actually happened in the episode anyways the voting will go out at the end of this episode for that and will remain open until the friday I return from my vacation as we have a fatal four-way match between one member of each of the four teams that have the opportunity to challenge for the world tag team titles depending on your votes next weekend over the next week as buddy murphy of the judgment day he and damian priest are part of the running for this here comes a man who was not terribly thrilled to find out he'd be part of the voting he'd be part of the polls the leader of the final testament the harbinger of doomsday The monster carrying cross making his way down to the ring. Himself and the Intercontinental Champion Nathan Frazier part of the voting for the event. Frazier willing to pull double duty. Frazier getting yelled at and lambasted by Cross last Monday for his ambition. Told that he needs to slow down by the leader of the Final Testament. Of course, we then saw a very interesting chance encounter. When one Liv Morgan would find Frazier in the hallway and tell the young man, the young champion, that she likes a man with ambition. Makes me wonder what's going on there as Karrion Cross makes his way down to the ring. Of course, Buddy Math Murphy, excuse me, happy to work alongside Nathan Frazier, viewing him as a bit of a little brother figure due to their time being mentored by Seth Rollins, a man they have both betrayed since. But Cross and Murphy. Apparently not the most thrilled about having to work together in the whole Final Judgment Alliance. Murphy really only wanted to work with Frazier and the Authors of Pain, three men that he's had experience with in the past, whereas Cross did not want any kind of alliances outside of the Final Testament. As now here comes one half of the OC. Here comes the machine gun, Carl Anderson, to the ring. Anderson getting a huge singles opportunity here tonight. The OC all getting big opportunities, potentially, at Cyber Sunday, with the exception of the leader, AJ Styles as Meech and Mia Yim will return to Monday Night Raw in just a few nights time to be part of the Cyber Sunday number one contender six pack challenge which our Raw general manager Big E will be announcing the full lineup for after this matchup so soon we will know the five women from Monday Night Raw that will be taking part in that matchup as well as the three options that you the fans will have for the NXT entry into that matchup and out last but most certainly not least throw up the u he's the final member of the he's the newest member of chase university he, he earned his initiation last week when he helped chase you get the victory the big man from the the big man ridge holland making his way down to the ring A massive matchup here for him tonight. Andre Chase putting trust in him for this matchup here. This matchup obviously won't sway the voting, so to say, but I do feel, and I think many will agree, that it could uh, it could give some momentum to a team heading in, and maybe, maybe it could sway a few people who are on the fence about what team they want to see challenge the Wyatt Six. It could make some people think, oh, well, whoever wins this matchup, maybe they deserve it more than the others. 
But I think everyone knows Cyber Sunday is all about favorites. So, it will be a real popularity contest, so to say. As without any further ado, this fatal four-way match kicks us off. Here we go! Oh, and Buddy out of the game with a kick. Ridge Holland go, getting caught by Karrion Cross. Murphy now. Knee to the face. Taking down Anderson. Big pounce there from Ridge. Buddy with an elbow. Drops an elbow now on the back of Carl Anderson as well. It's one fall of the finish as Ridge pounces Buddy across the ring. Big uppercut there from Carl Anderson. Grabs all of Buddy Matthews now. Big right hook connects. Matthews. Knee strike. Big clothesline there from Karrion Cross. Wondered how long it would take these two to start getting their hands on one another. Cross now throws him into the corner here. Karrion Cross connects. Cross turns his attention now to Ridge Holland. He's got two men in the corner, one against the ropes. Cross now grabs onto him and Karrion Cross. Oh, massive uppercut from Carl Anderson. As Cross wipes out Ridge Holland with that big belly to belly over the top. Arm drag there, takes him down. Cross now. Murphy throws him into the corner now. Buddy Murphy gets caught by Carl Anderson. Ridge Holland letting out a battle cry for the U. Throw the U's. I, so the, I, I'll admit, there's a failed recording where I got two minutes in this matchup and then realized that a lot of my mods were broken. Like, Ridge was wearing his uh, Brawling Brutes gear. Cross had short hair. The arena was wrong. Like, it was the old, like, 20 giant screen Raw arena, not the nicer, more dark Raw arena that we have now. But I mentioned that I just realized that there's a prime opportunity for merch with LS11U because our username is LS11Universe. But Steven Larson just did Frendo U, so I feel like I feel like there could be some uh, some unfortunate uh, professionalism issues there if I were to do that. That being said, we need to bring back the LS11 merch store. What kind of what kind of LS11 merch would you guys even want? You know. Big knee strike there from Buddy Murphy. Grabs on to Carl Anderson, getting him back up to his feet. Rolls him through, and hits the B-trigger again. Ridge Holland's got a chair now as Buddy goes into the corner, and Buddy marking his man with Carl Anderson. Buddy coming in now, and Buddy hits the big knee strike. As Ridge sweeps off the table, and Buddy... Following Ridge to the outside now. Buddy Murphy grabs onto Ridge Holland. And, oh, throws him into the barricade. But Ridge comes back in like a house of fire. And Carl Anderson right behind him now. And now, oh, Mosh Pit going on inside the ring. Doomsday Saido from Karrion Cross. Cross lets out a, lo a loud battle cry there. Grabs hold of Ridge, but Ridge counters. Cross now taken down. Ridge getting fueled by Rage here as Buddy... Pulls him in. No. Ridge now has the leg swept out from under him. Big takedown from Carl Anderson. Buddy Murphy goes down now. Carl Anderson's got him down. Kick to the face now from Murphy to Carl Anderson. Picks him back up. Cross. Hold on a minute. Cross. Final prayer. Murphy breaking up the pinfall. Oh, but Cross answers back. Chair to the head of Carrion. Murphy gets out of the way. Kicks Carl Anderson. Countered by Anderson. Now Carl Anderson getting caught. Murphy, big flying knee strike to Ridge. Ridge pulls him in now. And Ridge Holland. No, Buddy counters it. Oh, my God. Pile driver. And Cross tried to capitalize off of it. Buddy, German suplex to Carrion. Spine buster from Carl Anderson. Into a cover now. Carl Anderson, one. No, Buddy kicks out. Ridge now pulls him in. And Ridge Holland, gut wrench. Lifts him up. Takes him down. 
That's the move that got him his initiation last week. And Cross and Murphy both making the save. Big flying knee strike there to Cross. Now Murphy. Pulled in by Karrion Cross. And Cross answering back now. Counter for counter with these two. Rich Holland, a kick to the ribs of Carl Anderson. Holland takes him down now. Murphy grabbing a hold of of Karrion Cross, but Cross answers back. Carl Anderson. Oh, massive shot block from Ridge. It's Cross now. Look at this. Gun wrench power ball on the floor to Murphy. Cross lets out a yell of rage at Murphy. Murphy now. Knee to the face. He turns over Karrion Cross and Murphy with Stomp. Ridge takes down Carl Anderson. Ridge Holland. One buddy with the counter. Cross recovering from the stomp as Buddy with a meteor out of the floor. And now Ridge with Carl Anderson. Drops him. Cross on the way. One saved by Carrion. Counter for counter with everybody involved. Cross. It's a massive exploder. Into the cover. Murphy's turn. One. Countered by Murphy. Murphy now grabs a hold of Carl Anderson. Machine gun fighting back now. Ridge now picking him up as here comes. Here comes. Oh, wait a minute. Here comes Carl. Here comes Carrion Cross. Murphy's got him though. And Murphy. Oh my god, look at this. He's doing a modified stomp on a chair. Murphy trying to take out Doomsday. Neutralize one of the biggest threats in the match. Anderson just hit the gun stun. Cross puts Murphy up against the announce table. Massive neck breaker from Anderson. Carl Anderson now puts Murphy on the table. Punches him. Murphy is laid flat on the table. Anderson grabs a hold of Ridge and throws him back into the ring. It's any man's game right now. This would be huge for anyone to get this win. Gets momentum for their team. Anderson into a cover. Again, a save from Karrion Cross. Cross with a massive hammer arm lariat. Murphy dumping him out of the ring. Ridge taken down. Carl Anderson now. Buddy Murphy. No. Ridge Holland. Or excuse me. Carrying Cross. Counter for counter now. Murphy. With Cross. Counter again. As Ridge has got Anderson down. Murphy and Cross. Doomsday Saito. But Murphy back to his feet. Murphy says, no, we ain't done out here. As Murphy now grabs a hold of Cross, picking him back up to his feet. Buddy Murphy. Oh! Whipped with the kendo stick by Ridge. And now Ridge thrown in the announce table from Murphy. Murphy! Oh! Carl Anderson tries to buy Karrion Cross. Breaks the kendo stick across Ridge's head. This match is getting intense. One, some of these guys may not even make it to Cyber Sunday. Oh, Ridge taken down now. Carl Anderson, spine buster on the floor to Murphy. And now he's got up Ridge and swings him out. Gun stun! Who's going to get the better of this one is Anderson and... Cross circling one another. Murphy grabs a hold of Ridge. Murphy grabs the brute and takes him towards the announce table. Murphy, no, countered by Ridge. Murphy counters again now, and Murphy. There's a hold of him from behind again now, and Murphy puts him against the announce table. Gun stun. Connects. Carl Anderson. One. And now Murphy 
Going up to the table with Rich Holland on it and Buddy Murphy. This is what he's been waiting for. Brain Buster! Anderson drops the elbow on Karrion Cross. Murphy flies in with an elbow to Carl Anderson. Buddy Murphy kicks him in the ribs, pulls him in, lifts him up. Murphy's Law Cover. One, two, three. And just like that, the secret is out. And the secret of Judgment Day picks up the win. Buddy Murphy picking up the victory over Car Karrion Cross, Carl Anderson, and Ridge Holland. Will that sway things in the favor of Judgment Day? I suppose we'll find out. Hell of a matchup to start Raw as well. I was not expecting it to go that long. I was not expecting it to be that great. I loved that match. I had a lot of fun with that match. We got plenty more coming up. Big E, going to make some announcements regarding some of the women's matches coming up at Cyber Sunday. And then we'll have more coming up right now on Raw. Thank you everyone who's tuning in to Raw so far tonight. I hope you've enjoyed our first matchup of the evening. I have a quick announcement. That is, I'm going to announce the participants in the six-woman, six-pack number one contenders challenge for next week at Cyber Sunday. Five of the women will be selected to be in there by me. But you will all be voting on the special NXT name that will be in the matchup. And those five names that I can announce now here tonight are the LWO Zelina Vega, the Storm Jade Cargill, the OC's Meechan Mia Yim, Ivy Nile, and the Sky Pirate EO Sky. I can also announce here and now that the NXT options you will all be presented with for that night for the upcoming show at Cyber Sunday, the three NXT names you will be given to vote from are Lola Vice, Carmen Petrovic, and Jada Parker. And if we have some kind of unprecedented tie, then the tie, the tie there is the opportunity for a draw. If there is a three-way draw, it will become an eight-woman matchup. If there is a two-way draw, it will become a seven-woman matchup. I can also announce very quickly before we return to our show that you will also be voting on the stipulation for the now-announced match between Alexa Bliss and Roxanne Perez at Cyber Sunday. The polls will be opening for the show later today, so be sure to get your votes in because they cut off next week. Final voting for Cyber Sunday will close on Friday, September 13th. All right, we've got some more singles action coming up next here on Monday Night Raw. As here comes the teammate and best friend of the women's world champion, Chelsea Green, making her way down to the ring. Chelsea Green ready for action tonight. Once again, ready to fight the battles for Tiffany Stratton that Stratton refuses to do. Of course, Chelsea Green is one of the options for the special guest referee in the upcoming Stratton versus Flair matchup at the Cyber Sunday event next weekend. And Chelsea Green now tonight looks to humble the Queen and get a massive upset, a massive victory for the hot mess. As here comes her opponent. Here comes the queen. Charlotte. Flair. To the ring. Flair getting her first shot of the women's championship in quite some time. In just a couple of nights at Cyber Sunday. It's been a long time since Charlotte had a chance to win gold in the OS 11 Universe. We have yet to see her with singles gold. Specifically singles gold. In the LS11 universe. So far in LS11, she's only been a women's tag team champion in the five years of this series' existence. So if you're going to go in the comments and call me an idiot because she's like a 14 time champion or whatever in barely 10 years on the main roster, keep in mind, unless we show it in the retro series, it hasn't happened yet. Still heated about that. I'm still heated about that. Anyways, 
Charlotte making her way down to the ring, ready for some action herself. We saw her return to action last week when she took on Zelina Vega of the LWO. And now tonight, she finds herself head-to-head -head with Chelsea Green, the Queen, and the Hot Mess. As the Queen prepares to take on Raw's resident princess in Tiffany Stratton next weekend. Chelsea Green grabs a hold of her now, and now Chelsea pulls her in, and Neckbreaker takes her down. Snapmare knocks her down now. Chelsea knee into the back. Charlotte down now. Chelsea Green with Charlotte down. Charlotte Snapmare rolls her through now, and Charlotte Flair, big back elbow strike there, takes her down. Chelsea Green now grabs a hold of her, pulls her in, and oh, Rough Rider! Whoever at 2K put that in her move set knew what they were doing. Charlotte now pops back up to her feet. Jawbreaker knocks her back. And Blair. Fall away slam taking down Chelsea. Chelsea goes down now. Big kick there. Chelsea Green now grabs her, pulls her in. Chelsea Green. Head first in the turnbuckle. Forearm strike connects. Kicking the ribs now, Charlotte. No, kicking the back from Charlotte to Chelsea. Chelsea Green now, chop block from Flair, takes her down again. Chelsea now, a big slap to the face of Charlotte. Charlotte counters, kick in the head. Chelsea goes down now, and Chelsea kicked in the leg again. Charlotte trying to soften her up for the figure eight, I think. Robert Stone trying to coach Chelsea on here. Charlotte, oh my god. Just assaulting the leg. Chelsea enters back with a kick, though. And stumbles back to her feet now in green. Kicking in the ribs now. And Chelsea Green going for a Canadian Destroyer. Back body drop from Flair. Charlotte Flair dominating in the moment. Is, wait a minute. Robert Stone. Mr. Stone trying to yell at Charlotte. Keeping her attention off of, off of Chelsea Green. But Charlotte... Takes a swing at Stone. Chelsea grabs a hold of her now. Chelsea Green pulls her in. Green off the ropes. Arm drag to Flair. Taking her down. Comes back in with a kick to the face of Charlotte. Chelsea standing over her now. Chelsea's got her down. Chelsea goes for the leg. Charlotte kicks out the leg now. Now Charlotte goes for the back elbow. Chelsea out of the way. Chelsea Green. Oh, spear from Charlotte. Wipes her out. And now Charlotte... Sending the message right to Tiffany Stratton. Locking in the figure four. And Charlotte Flair is going to roll through into the bridge for the figure eight. In on green. And Charlotte Flair forces the submission in quick fashion. Charlotte Flair with the victory over Chelsea Green. That countered Canadian Destroyer followed up by a spear is what turns things around. She got the figure four in. She bridged it into the figure eight. Your winner, the number one contender to the women's world title, Charlotte Flair. But who will be the special guest referee of that matchup? We will find out on the night of Cyber Sunday. We got more coming up on Raw up next. Axiom going to be taking on a huge task, a huge challenge on his road to the Intercontinental title. I heard last week where Baron Corbin and Montez Ford were talking about their reasons that they believe you should all vote for them to be the challenger to Omos for the speed title next week at Cyber Sunday. I just wanted to take a moment here tonight to tell you that I've not gotten an opportunity like this ever. I was allowed one match all the way back in Season 3, and that was my debut, but Ilya Dragunov mopped the floor with me. After that, I went missing for two years, not given a spot on TV until Season 5, when Andre Chase took me in and invited me to the reformed and newly built Chase University on Monday Night Raw. But now Andre has got a partner, Mr. Chase has got a partner in Ridge Holland, and they are in the polls to be challenging for the Raw World Tag Team Championships at Cyber Sunday. So, I want to take this moment of the campaign to all of you to ask you to indulge me, to ask you for your vote, for your submission, for your demand, make your voice heard that you want Duke Hudson, the star student of Chase University, to be the challenger to the speed title 
at Cyber Sunday. And if I do get the vote from all of you, I do promise I will make a I will make history. I will make a name for myself. I will make not only Chase University proud, but each and every one of you proud by taking down the Nigerian giant. <laughs> You think that you will defeat me? I want you to keep underestimating me, Omos. You're big and bad compared to everybody else. But that just makes me want to beat you more. <laughs> keep the heart and fire, little man. Alright, we got some more action coming up next as here comes the number one contender to the Intercontinental Championship. The man who will be facing Nathan Frazier in a match with a stipulation chosen by all of you next weekend at Cyber Sunday. The options, I believe, are an Iron Man match, a ladder match, and a two out of three falls match. The same stipulation. They got Axiom here as the man responsible for the most copyright claims on this channel. And I'm not even joking. His theme gets copyrighted every damn week. And I can never find a way to fix it. At this point, I'm getting close to just giving him a remix of the 90s Spider-Man theme and calling it a day to see if that fixes anything. Axiom, the former NXT North American champion, making his way down to the ring. The Spaniard bringing some international flair to Monday Night Raw as he gets closer and closer to his shot at the Intercontinental title. A title many believe he is, the, he is destined to be the one to dethrone Nathan Frazier for. But he's got a tall task ahead of him, a colossal task ahead of him, to say the least. A towering and imposing figure. As here comes Bronson Reed to the ring. As Bronson Reed makes his way to the ring, let's do this. Axiom has got a mountain to climb in this encounter. Without any further ado, Axiom and Bronson Reed. Here we go. Axiom comes in. Oh, and a forearm! Manages to take the big man off his feet. Axiom hits the ropes. Oh, and Bronson cuts him off. Bronson with a right hook now, not going to back. Big uppercut, pulls him in. Bronson Reed, close line. Grabs hold of him, getting him back up to his feet now. Bronson Reed. Pulling him in now, and Bronson head first into the turnbuckle goes Axiom. Big chop there now. Axiom chopped again. Bronson Reed chops him one more time, taking him down. Axiom. Takes out the leg. Axiom's got him down now. Axiom. Roundhouse kick to Bronson. Bronson Reed drops him. Turns him over with a kick now, and Bronson drops the elbow across the back. Reed has got him down now. Axiom pulls himself into the bottom rope as Bronson Reed striking a pose there. Axiom pulls himself up. Oh, and out of the ring he goes. Oh, no. If Bronson, if Bronson flies like this onto Axiom, Axiom's not getting back up. But Axiom with a massive counter. And a roundhouse kick as well. Before following up, standing moonsault on the floor. Axiom back into the ring now, and Axiom dives out on the Bronson. Bronson Reed taken down. As Axiom goes back into the ring, coming off the ropes now, Axiom. Knee strike to Bronson, knocks him back, hits the ropes again. Axiom comes in, Bronson Reed managed to shove him away. Bronson's got him up on his shoulders, and Bronson drops him into the mat. Sent on. Cover now by the Colossal for the one, two, kick out from Axiom. Bronson going up to the top. Axiom kipping back up to his feet now. Axiom throws the big man off the ropes, taking him down. Axiom goes through the ropes now. Axiom. Whoa, catches Bronson. Look at this. Ties him up in the rope, but he's only gotten to the referee's count of five or else he's disqualified. Taking him down now. Axiom. 
goes for a big flying clothesline, Reed out of the way. Bronson Reed taking him down now, Bronson Reed. Ascending to the top rope, and Bronson, here we go. Tsunami, nobody home. Golden ratio. Axiom now. Knows that's not going to be enough. Bronson's already starting to stagger back to his feet. Axiom into a clothesline. Follows that up with another. Duxim hits the ropes now, and Axiom, pop-up drop kick. Bronson Reed goes down now. Axiom has the former United States champion down. Axiom to the top rope. And Axiom, massive frog splash as he bounces over the colossal one. And now Axiom, here we go. Standing moon salt as well. Reed retreats out of the ring now, and Axiom. Here we go. Goes for a flying crossbody, but Bronson rolls out of the way. Bronson kicks out the leg now. Bronson Reed has got him down. Bronson Reed turns him over. Reed kicks him in the ribs. Count of four now as Bronson grabs onto Axiom. He pulls a man up on the shoulders now. Bronson Reed with Axiom. Drops him head first into the ring apron. Six count. Bronson grabbing him. Axiom answers back. Seven count. Axiom, super kick. Staggering Bronson, eight count. Reed back into the ring. Into another super kick that floors him. And Axiom now grabs the arm. Arm bar in. He tapped out AJ Styles like this last week for the win. Could he do that to Bronson Reed as well? Put down a far bigger, far more imposing physically opponent. But Bronson Reed rolling back through with it. Bronson Reed now punching away at Axiom. And Reed now DT to Axiom. Axiom down now. Bronson picking him back up to his feet now. Bronson Reed chops him down. Here we go. He's going up for the Tsunami again. Bronson. Tsunami! Nobody home. Roundhouse kick from Axiom. And now Axiom... Posed and ready for a second golden ratio. Oh my god. And a third. One, two, three. He still got him in the end. Love it or hate it, Axiom got him in the end. A massive, massive victory there for Axiom. He puts down Bronson Reed with three golden ratios. That last one spiking the big Aussie down with a thunderous landing in the mat. And Axiom further proves why he is the next challenger to the Intercontinental title. Our main event is just moments away. Thought I'd find you out here. I got a bone to pick with you. Oh yeah? Why is that? I heard what you said a few weeks ago. While I was out, while I was recovering. I heard what you said to Johnny. Warning him to slow down his title defenses. To not be ambitious. Or else you'd make him stop. Yeah, I said that to him. What of it, Champa? What of it? is you're supposed to be his friend just like I am. What of it is that you're not going to ruin his title reign with that little briefcase of yours? <laughs> you're telling me that the roles were reversed and this briefcase was in your hands, you wouldn't be comparing the idea of hitting Johnny over the head with it and winning the championship. You're an opportunist, champ, but you're no better than me and you know it. Everyone knows one of us is going to betray Johnny one day. It's just a matter of who does it first. You son of a bitch. That was years ago that I last betrayed him. Seven years. Have I not made up for it yet? You'd have to ask him. Mind yourself, prize fighter. I might decide I want that briefcase from your cold, 
dead hands. And trust me, it can and will be arranged. All right, it is time for the main event. It is a rematch from the first episode of the season. As here comes the WWE champ to the ring. Johnny Gargano making his way down to the ring. So, Johnny Wrestling preparing for his matchup with Randy Orton. Their third ever one-on-one -on -one championship encounter. No, excuse me, only their second ever one-on-one -on -one championship encounter. Their third ever singles encounter, though. The score between the two stands one-to-one -one at the moment. All the way back in Season 2 when Orton emerged on SmackDown and put Johnny out with the punt kick. Orton would win the match and put Gargano out for over a month. The following year, Season 3, when Johnny Gargano was the villainous world champion leading the way, Randy Orton would challenge him for the World Heavyweight Championship in a last man standing match that Gargano would win by returning the punt kick to Randy Orton. And now, with just days remaining until their encounter at Cyber Sunday, it is up to the fans to determine what their stipulation will be to pick the poison of the two. As I've mentioned, the poll will open up as soon as this episode has gone live. And the current stipulation options will be tables, ladders, and chairs as a tribute to the show that Cyber Sunday has replaced in the Oz 11 Universe lineup over the years. Steel Cage match to ensure that nobody gets in or out of the matchup due to the frequent interference involved in all of their past encounters, or a last man standing match to run back the encounter they had many years ago. But here comes the national treasure to the ring, Nick Aldis, the former leader of the Six, fresh off of his loss a few weeks ago to Austin Theory at our last big event, Vengeance. Finds himself head-to-head -head with the WWE Champion once again. Last time he faced off with Johnny Wrestling, he ended up losing due to interference from Austin Theory. But now Aldis gets a chance to try and beat the World Champion in a one-on-one -on -one encounter. Potentially earn a future title shot against the winner of Gargano and Orton next weekend. Aldis puts Gargano in the ropes now, grabs a hold of him. Nick Aldis grabs him. Stunt gun taking down Johnny Wrestling. Aldis now slides into a cover on Gargano. One kick out from Johnny Gargano. Gargano now grabs him. Johnny Gargano pulls him in. Close line. Taking down Nick Aldis. Aldis takes him down with an elbow. Does Gargano. Nick Aldis getting picked back up by Johnny Gargano. There's a chop. Aldis chops Gargano back. Here we go. Chop off between the two. Gargano punches him in the face. Knocking him back. Counter for counter. Chop again. These two just chopping the hell out of one another. Johnny Gargano goes for a chop. Nick Aldis telling the champion, try it again. Gargano lashes out with a super kick on him instead. Getting him back up to his feet now. Gargano begins chopping away at Nick Aldis, firing back. Gargano into a double axe handle now. And to another one. Grabs Aldis, rolls him through, kicks him in the head, knocks him into the corner. Johnny Gargano has knocked him back into the corner now. And Gargano now scoops him up. Johnny Wrestling's got him. And Lawn Dart taking him down. Gargano goes for a shot. Countered. Nick Aldis into a clothesline. Follows it up with a second one. Nick Aldis knocking him back. Aldis knocking him back to the champion. And into a massive lariat again. Gargano goes down. Johnny Gargano turned over now by Nick Aldis. Aldis, no. Gargano retreating into the bottom rope. Nick Aldis. Oh, massive crossbody. Goes for an elbow. Gargano out of the way now. Gargano goes for another right hook. Nick Aldis. Big boot to Gargano. Gets it back up to his feet now. Aldis grabs onto him. Pulls Gargano in. Throws him into the barricade. Taking him down. Aldis has got him down. Gargano staggering back to his feet now. And Johnny wrestling up onto the apron as Aldis staggers back to his feet. Johnny Gargano. Right hook connects from Aldis. Gargano countering. Johnny wrestling now. Whoa. Hits the thrust kick on Aldis as Nick Aldis is trying to stand back up. Amazing counter there from Johnny. 
Gargano getting him back up to his feet now. Big right hook connects to Alice, firing away at him again. Johnny Gargano knocking back the national treasure now. Gargano hits the ropes. Nick Aldis turns him around. Right hook grabs him. Aldis has got him up and takes him down. Into a cover now on the champion. Johnny's down. One, two, kick out from Gargano. Aldis has got him down now. Nick Aldis looking to go for the cloverleaf. Countered. Johnny Gargano firing away at him now. Knocks him back. Gargano. I hope connects now and Johnny firing away at him. Johnny Gargano with Nick Aldis pulls him in. Johnny has got a hold of him. Johnny Gargano sends him off the robes. Gargano slides under him, pops back up into Hurricane Rana taking him down. Hello into the back now, takes him down again. Gargano grabs a hold of him, getting him back up to his feet. Johnny wrestling. And Zagari knocks him down. Has Aldis back up to his feet. Johnny. Grabs a hold of him again now, and Johnny Gargano grabs Nick Aldis now. Countered, Aldis counters, Aldis throws him in the corner, clothesline into Bulldog. Nick Aldis now with Gargano down on the mat. Aldis has got him. Here we go. He turns the champion over into the cloverleaf. Knee into the back. He could make Gargano submit. Gargano quickly twists out of it, though. He could feel the pain writhing, and he made sure to get out of that ASAP. Now Aldis has got him up, looking potentially for the Mag Daddy Driver, countered by Gargano. You can tell me he renamed it to the Bru to the Magnus Driver all you want. Mag Daddy Driver is fucking hilarious, and I will never stop calling it that. Same way Twisted Bliss is deep down always the sparkle splash to me. If you guys can, if you guys can hold on to the past gimmicks of people ten years after they've stopped, I can hold on to silly move names. Johnny Gargano ducked by Aldis now. Nick Aldis leapfrogs him. Aldis goes for the elbow. Gargano ends up Gary knocks him down again. Johnny turns him over now. It's Gargano's turn. He grabs Aldis into Gargano escape. Gargano escape in, but Nick Aldis's turn. The National Treasure rolls it through. Taking down Gargano. Kicking him back now. Aldis grabs him. Pops him up. Oh, massive DDT from Gargano. Aldis rolls out of the ring now. Nick Aldis, the champion, has him set up. And Johnny Wrestling, massive dive to the outside, taking him down. Gargano getting him back up to his feet now. Gargano went for a big discus clothesline. Nick Aldis countered. Nick Aldis throws him back into the ring. Aldis now grabs onto Gargano. Crossface. A crossface in, similar to Johnny's Gargano escape. Aldis trying to force a submission from the champion. I wish the referee could have gotten a better angle there. Gargano was most certainly in the ropes. But Gargano, nothing beats his original. Gargano escape. Aldis flailing about in the Gargano escape. Johnny wrenching it in. Aldis forced to submit. Johnny Gargano taking down Nick Aldis there with the Gargano escape. Massive win there for the champion tonight. Oh, hold on a minute. Well, here's the man that'll be challenging Gargano next weekend. There is the Viper. Here comes Randy Orton to the ring. Orton's clearly got something on his mind here tonight. What is he thinking about? Orton, it's been sneak attacks and RKOs all around lately. Between him and Gargano. I mean, just last week, Gargano hit Orton with an RKO and shouted, That's how it feels, you son of a bitch. And that was what we ended the night with on Raw. But Randy Orton has taken a direct approach tonight. Even these people are shocked about it, but hey, I can't blame them for being excited. Voices is an absolute banger of a theme, and when he strikes around out of nowhere, we hardly get to hear it. Johnny, you and all these people have wanted an explanation from me. For the last several weeks, correct? Why would I drop you with the RKO after being your friend, making amends with you so many months ago, so many years ago, that we put behind our problems from three and four years ago? Why would I throw all of that away? Well, here's the thing, Johnny. Last time, and the first time, you were a world champion before this second run of yours, 
You are a bad guy. You're quite the son of a bitch, even. Surrounded yourself with a faction. People to do your bidding. Your wife. Her little pal Indy. And that big son of a bitch Rampage Brown. They fought the battles for you. Hell. If it wasn't for Rampage getting involved a couple of three years ago at Extreme Rules, I think we all know I had you beaten that last man standing match. I would have been the World Heavyweight Champion that night. But now you're on top of the world as this beloved, humble, good guy. This man who can do no wrong, who fights for the people. And you're ambitious, and that is, that is quite the quality to have, Johnny. It is. But your ambition can be your own downfall. And I am trying to teach you that. The same way Kevin has been trying to teach you that for months. You are too ambitious for your own good. It's easy to hide behind a faction. I did it with Cody and Ted Jr. in Legacy for years. I did it with Evolution, with Hunter, Dave, and Rick for years. I had alliances with Edge. Hell, I even teamed up with Cena for a few months back in Season 4. When you're the beloved good guy on top of the world, the target on your back grows bigger every day. And you never know who's going to jump you. So that's why I've been dropping with these RKO's and I'm going to alleviate the pressure of being world champion from you. But until next Sunday when I do that, I've asked a few old friends to make sure you remember the burden of being champion. Andrade! Chop blocking Johnny from behind and Andrade! The message is loud and clear. As now Andrade lives Gargano up. R. K. O. And one for Andrade. Let that be a lesson to you too, kid. Randy Orton luring Andrade into helping him lay out Gargano. Only to RKO Andrade as well. A valuable lesson taught to Andrade tonight. Never trust the Viper in your hen house. And never turn your back on the Viper. Randy Orton lays out Gargano. Lays out Andrade. And the number one contender stands tall. Remember, I will be out of town next week. Raw will still come out at its normal time. Just probably not for members. Because I will be in the middle of my vacation with my wife. And quite honestly, we'll probably not have the energy or the memory to mark it as for members on Sunday night. Because that is the night we will finish our drive. And it is a long drive. So I will not be responding to comments for the next week following this weekend's Worlds Collide. Until next time, I've been Xander and that was Universe.